Hello everyone, we are back to do second part of our drive today. This is going to be the downtown Hendersonville test. Our first part of this drive is to go to Habitat for Humanity. So if you want to look this up, search Carl Sandberg home, find this parking lot next to the playhouse, and then you can see the route going from here to uh, Habitat for Humanity Restore. And of course I'm having to drive manually right now because that's the first, it finally corrected itself early after it got on this road instead of waiting until past this intersection. Oh, okay, now it uncorrected itself. That's how it, see it turned the blinker on. So what we're looking for is that it's not gonna mess up on this turn. So I did this again on 11 of that four, that six, actually two times. And it didn't mess up those two times. That was just a fluke the last time I had the video. It seems to be staying slightly more right, which is good. Uh, left, sorry, left that is good. And it shouldn't have barely enough room from the right to let a car through if it, if it needed to. Very timid coming through here. I often find that the more timid the car is, the less safe it feels, from my point of view. It's not like it's anywhere near overly aggressive. I don't consider myself an aggressive driver at, at all. But there's certain time periods where the car just needs to go. Like being that slow going through an intersection has room to cause issues. And so it just needs to commit. And I think. As we discussed in the previous video, version 12 is going to address that. It's gonna do basically the average of what every human does. If 95% of humans don't stop at a stop sign completely, that's what it's gonna do. If, you know, 60% of humans, you know, get up to speed pretty quickly, go into an intersection, most often, it is going to get up to speed at a reasonable pace. You know, if most humans cross the double line right here for this pedestrian, I'm pressing the accelerator, so it gave just a little bit of room. Um, but most humans probably would have gave more room than that. I would have gone, probably, my wheel would have been on the yellow line most likely. Unless there was a car coming, in which case I would be less over. So it's all variable based on what is currently happening. You know, if it's pouring down rain, and you can't see, you're gonna slow down instead of giving as much room. Or if it's clear like it is today, you might stay your ma maintain your speed, but just you know widen out a little bit, go a little bit further left to give that pedestrian more room. The VRU, as the more technical term is. And one thing you might know, I'm gonna start doing this in this videos is that I'm not zoomed in on the screen. If you guys really insist that you want it and it makes that big of a difference, I'll, I'll keep on doing it. But I, for right now, that adds just an extra layer of complexity to the editing process. And it's not really, like, I don't have a lot of time right now to edit the videos. So, um, that it just streamlines everything a lot to make it a lot simpler to edit the videos without having to add in that function to, to zoom in the screen. As far as I can tell, everything is exactly the same as 11 for that 6. I think they're just trying to refine this a little bit and making sure it's okay for wide release. It seems like there's a couple issues I had um, in the first in the first drive, but otherwise this feels exactly the same as 11 that 4 that 6, which is to say is a good thing. I, I don't see any reason why this can't go wide release. Why they haven't? Not sure. I'm guessing they were probably trying to play by ear with the uh, adjusting speed for traffic, track, uh, adjusting traffic, and, adjusting speed for traffic control. <laughs> that that um, thing. And so it's really nice to be able to have have that feature on the highway. I haven't seen it yet on this version, which is worrisome because I really like that feature. And it helped reduce the amount of interventions I had quite a bit. And I have 
a feeling they got rid of it. And we'll see on the way home if it comes back again. So if we look, well, we're not quite there. So I want to explain a situation that happened last weekend. I was driving myself when this happened. There, I was going out of Ace Hardware. We had this on video multiple times. It's this road right, uh, right here. This one right here. Um, and where that white truck just pulled out. I was pulling out. There's a van coming where this red van is right here coming towards me. Um, it had its blinker on and it was slowing down. So I just thought, and the right was clear, so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start moving out and to get across to make my own protected left. Well, the van, with its blinker on, decided to keep on a stop decelerating and kept on a, and decided to keep going. It sped back up. And almost, I almost made me hit the side of that van, which I would have been at fault which is absolute BS. Um, but yes, I would have been at fault because technically I'm supposed to... Yeah, we're gonna count this one. Because it needs to... Car needs to get into lane correctly sooner. When there's a car right here, it just, it can't, it can't do that. It can't just leave its butt out in the middle of the road like that. And so as a human, uh, I don't do that and version 12 is gonna learn that humans don't do that at these type of intersections and thus version 12 is gonna fix that relatively easily it'll know see every time like what's gonna happen is it's gonna get so good I'm pressing accelerate here just to give it a little bit more confidence now I'm not but uh, it's gonna get so good that they're gonna be able to focus on the disengagements like it's gotten so good right now if they could just focus on the disengagements it would be uh, it would it would get better so quickly because they would be able to look at my video over the last you know however six months of disengagement i just did the video clip too right there of why i disengaged and eventually it would figure it out it would try something different and when i don't disengage i'm like oh well i must have did it right awesome i learned and so, uh, and that's how it's gonna improve. It's just gonna take video clips of where we disengage, and it's just gonna figure out, okay, well, obviously, let's not do that next time. Let's try something different. And then it's gonna learn and do it right after a couple iterations. It's gonna learn very quickly, I think. And I, I'm just it's so excited to see that type of learning curve happen. We're just so close, like if, we can have like every two weeks have like one issue like that fixed. Like every two weeks, just one issue like that fixed. We're I'm, I'm gonna have like zero intervention drives like almost consistently. Give it a few months, boom. All my drives will be zero interventions. Just, just magically like that within less than a year. I'll go from having like regular interventions, not to be confused with disengagements. I have quite a few zero disengagement drives, but zero intervention drives are very rare for me just because of the speed limit issues. But yeah, that type of stuff is really exciting that we're gonna get in. Ew, that was somewhat complex. We had a truck turning, we had the car coming in front of us. Yeah, so that was good. So we're gonna go over here and see what we have uh, in uh, Habitat. And then we'll bring you back once we're back out. Back at it, everyone. See how it does on going down Main Street here. What I'm curious is how it's going to ever do this well. These are the type of situations where, it, with the way, okay, it's going going in the parking lots. Okay, well, <laughs> we're not counting the second one. Um, I was going in the parking spaces, is what I was doing. So we're going to count that one. It's just, you know, I cannot let it do that, and it can make it fine. But like, what should I and should I not disengage for, everyone? It, you know, so, sometimes it doesn't do that, and sometimes it does. And it just, it just comes down to, like, what makes the most sense.
person straight ran the stop sign. That's cool. Georgia driver will watch you. Not quite a Florida driver. <laughs> yeah, so we're just gonna go to go straight down Main Street here. This gives us a okay. It stopped for the yield completely. It didn't actually have to do that. There was no pedestrian here. Now, if there was a pedestrian, it needs to be able to stop. And so that's the interesting part about again version 12. It's gonna see humans stopping at these yield signs for pedestrians, and it's gonna learn based on. The same way a human does, hey, there's a human right here, they're showing intent to cross the road. We need to stop. It's it's what's gonna it's gonna learn based on the text and everything that's in the video. And the shapes of how everything is. It's just it's just so hard to comprehend like how it's learning. I guess the same way how like explain like ask the question like, well how does a human learn? Uh, <laughs> the most basic way I know how to explain it. See right here, technically I guess legally I'm supposed to have stopped for that guy. Most people don't care. That guy probably doesn't care at all. Once the traffic goes away, he can cross the road. Like, I wouldn't care. Like, you don't have to stop for me. Just, just I'll just wait until traffic stops. Like, it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, for as a human word, the most basic way I know how to explain it is that the human takes in visual and touch and stimulus you know visual stimulus um, tactile stimulus auditory stimulus all our senses and then we our brain neurons are adjusted based on those stimuli you know based on if you receive enough loud stimulus from Loud could be in bright, loud could mean auditory volume, you know, loud could be uh, a lot of different things. But in terms of auditory loudness, let's we'll say you have a blaring speaker that you know is at one section every single day you walk by. You might decide to avoid that speaker uh, because it's giving you too much stimulus into your brain. I don't know. Like, I guess it builds certain pathways in the brain that your body's uncomfortable with that loudspeaker, so it decides, okay, I have the option, is there an option to avoid it? Well, let's try a different route. And then, hey, this doesn't have this loud sensory input, so now we, we're gonna take this other route because it, it worked better for us. Now, what the car doesn't have is emotion. The car doesn't have emotion, which plays a big role into a lot of issues when it comes to driving. When humans emote, they aren't able to you know, process things clearly. I am first to admit that. And why are we stopping? Can't can't do that car car behind me, you can't stop like that. So I did a good job uh, with that uh, car, with the guy getting his child out of the car. Did good right there. I can push the car forward because the car should move forward a little bit right here. These newest versions actually do quite well when it comes to little slow creeps like that. So it's light turn green. My car is going on its own. It's gonna be able to make it through. But as you saw, I had the route right here to make it get over. It, good, and it's getting over. So and I actually have to disengage because we're stopping right here. That's gonna be the end of this video. I'm not even gonna make a video for the next one, everyone. Uh, we're gonna skip the oldie route because that's really not that exciting. But um. Yeah, uh, I think I uh, did pretty well. I think this is fine for wide release. I don't see why they're holding it out. Um, maybe they're trying to get certain data. Who knows? Anyone's 
anyone's guess. If you have questions for me, put them down below. I appreciate those that stick it out. Uh, I appreciate the ones that uh, give me feedback in the comments and all that type of stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.